Okay, today we're going to look at multiplying uh, monomials. And we can see here uh, we're doing 5 times 3x. We've done that before. Um, back in third grade, you learned about those groups. There's one group of 3x. So 5 groups of 3x, we can see, would be 15x's. Another way we talked about it since then is using the area model where we put the 5 on the left and the 3x's on top and then fill in the pieces that fit. And again, you see there's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 x's. Um, and we can talk about this in two different ways. You can see this as five groups of 3x. There's three in that group, and you have five of them. Or you can look at this as three groups of five. Either way, you have 15 pieces making up that area. And that is an example of how multiplication is commutative. 5 times 3 is 3 times 5. Okay. So we can not only show it by using grouping model, using the area model, we can show you how this works mathematically. So what we have indicated here by the parentheses is that we're multiplying. And also the 3 next to the x indicates that we're multiplying. Multiplying from left to right, 5 times 3 is 15 times my x, and there's my 15x. Okay. Next we're going to look at 5x times 3x. You'll notice the difference in this case is that we have an extra factor of x here. Okay. Um, drawing it out with our picture model, we have a 3x is on top and 5x is along the side. That would give us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 x squares. Again, this way is going to get relatively bulky if we try to keep drawing all this. So we're looking at it mathematically. 5 times x is what's indicated. Then we have parentheses next to each other, multiplying. 3 written next to the x means 3 times x. And then what we're going to do, we're going to keep this 5 in place, and we're going to use a commutative property of multiplication. And I'm going to rewrite the 3 here. And then I'm going to move this x around this multiplication, write it over here, times x. Again, that was a commutative property of multiplication. 5 times 3 is 15 x times x. So two factors of x here, that's x squared. Not two x's. Remember, two x looks like this, x plus x. Okay? So we never want to say this is two x's. That's not two x's. That's two factors of x, and that's what we write for the second power. We don't want to equate uh, two x's with writing x to the second power. Two x's is repeated addition. It gives you a coefficient. Two factors of x is what gives us that exponent of the second power. Uh, likewise, it's going to make sense when we get to this one. This has two factors, c squared. That means two factors of c. Okay. And then we have c cubed. That's three factors of c. So two factors of c multiplied by three more factors of c. That's five factors of c. Because these are exponents. It's already repeated multiplication. You can see that we're not multiplying these to come up with it. You're adding your exponents together. Okay. Um, when we do this problem, again, we could go the long way. We can write the whole thing out, use our commutative property, and then start answering individual things. Okay. 40, and then x times x times x is x cubed. And we really can get to doing this now in our head by looking at 10 times 4 is... 40, multiplying your coefficients. Then look, you have one factor of x, two factors of x. That's going to give you three factors of x when you move them all together using the commutative property. So these were the problems that we practiced in class. Go to the notebook and check out our answers. Majority of people were doing pretty well with that. Okay. Um, we see that our first answer is 24xyz. Again, we did the 8 times the 3 and came up with the 24. 
and then you have your x times your y times your z, one factor of each of them. If we were to look it out to show that it works, here is our work that shows it works. You rewrite all the indicated multiplication, and then we use a commutative property to put our coefficients together, answer that, and here's the other factors you have left. Uh, looking at B, again, we multiply our coefficients, negative 5 times negative 4 gives us our negative, or positive 20, negative times negative is a positive. And then we see here three factors of A and five factors of A gives us eight factors of A. Again, looking at it a little bit longer if we write it all out, but you see what happens. Again, our three factors of A get moved together with our five factors of A and leave you with eight factors of A. Our coefficients get moved together using the commutative property of multiplication and multiply to give you the 20. Next one we're looking at is our negative 6y cubed times y. That's going to give us negative 6y to the fourth. Okay. Uh, three factors of y and another factor of y gives us four factors of y. Looking at D, we have 3 times 4, that's 12. Then we have 2 factors of A and 3 factors of A. When we move them together, we will have 5 factors of A. Then we have 3 factors of B and 4 factors of B. That will give us 7 factors of B. Sorry, B to the 7th power. 7 factors of B. Again, we don't want to say 7 B's because that would indicate a coefficient of 7. 7 B's would be B plus B plus B plus B plus B plus B. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 plus B. That's 7 B's. This is not 7 B's. It's 7 factors of B. 7 B's being multiplied. You have a factor of 3 and a factor of 4. That gives you an answer of 12. You end up, because you had 2 factors of A and 3 factors of A, so we end up with 5 factors of A. And then we have 3 factors of B and 4 factors of B gives you the 7 factors of B at the end. Looking at E, again, multiplying our coefficients. Negative times negative is positive. 5 times 2 is 10. Then you have 2 factors of x. Three fa another factor of x gives you 3 factors of x altogether. 3 factors of y and 2 factors of y gives you 5 factors of y. This is a factor of negative 5 and a factor of negative 2. That's why you get an answer of positive 10. So those are all the answers. What we wrote at the bottom is that you're multiplying your coefficients and you're adding the exponents on the variable. We also want to review the distributing, uh, distributive property. Let's look at what we would do without the distributive property. Order of operations, we'd add the 3 plus 4 first and get 7, multiply it by the 5 and come out with 35. Now let's look at using the distributive property, show you we get the same thing in the end. I take the 5 out in front, multiply it by the 3, and it gives me 15. Then I multiply the 5 times the 4, and it gives me 20. I add those together, and it gives me 35. Take a look at this one. We're distributing the 4x to the 5x. Very commonly, I get 20x. Well, what we forgot about there, though, we did our 4 and our 5 to come up with 20, but you have a factor of x another factor of x, so it is not 20x, it is 20x squared. Here we have 4 times 6, which is 24, and then you have one factor of x, so 24x. In this last problem, as we distributed it, here's where we really need to be careful about everything. First, we're going to take care of our signs, so negative times a positive is a negative. I'm going to worry about my 
number. 3 times 5 is 15. So I have a coefficient of negative 15. Now I'm going to look at my factors of A. One factor of A, two factors of A, that gives me three factors of A. Last, I look at my factors of B. One factor of B, no more factors of B, so I have one factor of B. That's our first multiplication. Now I'm going to go on to the second multiplication and follow that process again. We look here, we have a negative this time times a negative. That comes out positive. Then we have a 3 times a 7. That comes out 21. We have one factor of A. No factors of A over here, so one factor of A. Then we have one factor of B and two factors of B. That gives me three factors of B. B to the third. That should be enough for us to get started on our practice problems. Please be careful. Remember to multiply your coefficients and add your exponents.